Welcome to Chapter 11. Here, we start at the start of 2016. This chapter is an intensive medical story through 2016, 2017, and early 2018. 2018 was my last year in the United Kingdom. At the start of 2018, I moved from London to Liverpool in connection with an immigration matter. In Liverpool, I kept falling sick. In my previous chapter, I explained how I started feeling weak in late 2015 and had a cardiac episode in January 2016. As I explained, the hospital, which relied on a troponin test, told me they were non-cardiac chest pains. I had a treadmill test in February 2016 at Hillingdon Hospital. In a treadmill test, they make you walk up a moving ramp while you are connected to an ECG monitor. The ramp moves at variable speeds. The test will check how well you can exercise. The ECG will show if you are able to exercise effortlessly like normal people. They told me the treadmill test results were normal. I'm sure they were not. Because, they do a first test, and only if that does not confirm that your heart has a normal strength, will they do a second test to investigate further. They sent me for an angiogram in March 2016. I was registered at a doctor's surgery, whose senior doctor was Dr. S. There were several junior doctors. I was losing weight and feeling very unwell. The junior doctors suspected I might have cancer. They wanted to do a colonoscopy. The junior doctors were surprised that two months had gone by, and I still did not have the results of my angiogram. Senior doctor S. did not want me to have my angiogram test results. I also had a lot of body pain throughout 2016. I was also going to accident and emergency in London with cardiac emergencies throughout 2016 and 2017, and in Liverpool in early 2018 on April 30, 2018, I entered to Ireland. On average, I visited accident and emergency around once in two months during the above-mentioned time period. Before attending accident and emergency, I was having mounting chest pain radiating to the left. My heart would squeeze wildly. I would have difficulty breathing. The breathing difficulty was my worst symptom. My cardiac episodes were agony. So, I felt that my cardiac episodes must be serious. When I reached accident and emergency, they would always do a blood test called a troponin test. As I explained in the previous chapter, this is the blood test that measures your troponin levels. If your troponin is quite high, it proves that you have had a heart attack in the last few hours or the last 24 hours. A troponin test cannot prove anything else. A troponin test cannot prove that you have a normal heart, or that you have never had a heart attack. A normal troponin test result does not guarantee that you will not die later the same day. A heart attack is one of the most painful experiences a human could have. If something very painful did not happen to you, you probably have not had a heart attack. I understand that old people often have heart attacks, which are painless, and drop dead unexpectedly, but please remember that I am not a doctor. Get checked up by a doctor, if you are not old, but think you may have had a heart attack, which was not extremely uncomfortable. My advice is not medical advice. If you have chest discomfort, whether it is mild or severe, please take yourself to accident and emergency. A normal ECG does not prove that your heart is normal. But sometimes your ECG will reveal to the doctors something, is going on. I went to accident and emergency around once in two months. I showed a normal level of troponin, every time, proving that I had not just had a heart attack. But my ECG was abnormal, every time. Doctors refused to deal with the fact my ECGs were not normal. They kept insisting I had non-cardiac pains. When I had chest pain and breathing problems, I would call NHS direct for medical advice. The nurse would assess me. Then, she would ask me to take 300 mg soluble aspirin and lie down and wait for an ambulance. GTN spray is sprayed under the tongue. You must use one or two puffs. If you get a headache, it means GTN spray has entered your body. This spray reduces the blood in your head, which causes a headache. The blood pumps into your heart. When a person has a heart attack, a blood vessel near the heart is blocked, preventing circulation. Aspirin and GTN spray are vasodilators. This means they will expand the blood vessels so they don't become blocked. They can prevent you from getting a heart attack. GTN spray is very good at preventing heart attacks. 
your head hurts because it is starved of oxygen. After all, less blood is going into your head. The situation goes back to normal very soon. If doctors keep on telling you that you have non-cardiac pains, as they did to me, there is an acid test. If your chest discomfort resolves by using GTN spray, your chest pains are cardiac pains. Well, doctors say it can be dangerous to use GTN spray, since your blood pressure may drop. But my blood pressure does not drop, even when I put dozens of puffs under my tongue, because my chest discomfort is increasing. I do not know how to assess which warnings by doctors are purely legalistic, endangering one in a million, and which cautions are genuinely worth heeding. Aspirin also dilates the blood vessels around your heart preventing your heart attack. The ambulance would come. They would take me to accident and emergency. On the way or before getting into the ambulance, they would take an ECG. When the ambulance arrived, they would take my ECG and then take me to Hillingdon Hospital in the ambulance. That was in 2016, and currently, we are in July 2023. I've been told several lies about the ECG as the years have rolled by since 2016. To some extent, I believe it's a general policy of doctors not to be truthful about ECGs. I want to explain why I said my ECGs were abnormal. I have saved up some of the ECGs from these various episodes in 2016 and 2017. I was able to get them from medical records later on most of the time. The kinds of lies medics tell me are designed for persons of low intelligence and low literacy. I suspect this is probably true of the people living here. Maybe there is a huge gap between men and women over here. The medics tell me lies they can reasonably expect the local population to trust and believe. Illiteracy is a choice. It may not be socially acceptable in your society not to be illiterate. I am hated, and if you become like me, if you act like me, you may also end up as a hate object. But if you want to understand, help is available. An attitude change is necessary. If you are a heart patient, you too can look at your ECG and easily tell that it's abnormal. First of all your ECG will probably contain the word abnormal in print. This comment is usually written by a machine rather than by a human. What happens if your ECG contains the word abnormal, but your doctor tells you not to trust the ECG and has some explanation as to why it is normal? Ultimately, you're going to trust your intelligence, but I'd like to say that it's a 100% lie. The machine has been programmed and it's not so inaccurate. Science has advanced a lot and heart disease is one of the most common things. ECG machines are not programmed to write nonsense. So if you want to bet your money you should be reasonably willing to believe what the machine says when there is a contradiction between the man, woman, and the machine. With artificial intelligence, the interpretive powers of all machines are going to improve in leaps and bounds. On the other hand, you should take it seriously if the doctor spots a defect in the ECG the machine ignored.